Hello and welcome back. My name is Kevin. This is Argument Parsing in Rust version 2. This is episode 8, Options. All right, so last time we spoke about flags and before that we spoke about positional arguments. Now we're going to talk about options. Options are sort of like the combination between positional arguments and flags. They take a, a, a switch character such as, you know, lowercase o, or a double hyphen with a word, an option. And then after that, they take a value. So maybe dash o value, or dash dash option value. Something that can be done though, is there's multiple ways to add that value to an option. Some programs support doing, uh, dash lowercase or you know a uh, single character with a space in the value some support a single character with an equal sign in the value some support a double option with a space in a value or the double hyphen the word and equals in a value clap supports all of the above so you can actually do any of those when defining your your options and they're all supported by default. All right, so now if we go back to our fake program, we have arg1, flag1, which has a long and a short, flag2, which only has a short, but it's multiple. Now let's define our first option. Like all arguments, it's a good idea to give it a help. So we'll say, this is some option. Again, if we weren't putting anything other than this, it would turn into an argument or into a positional argument. If we just add a short though, it's now a flag. Even if we add a long, it's still a flag. The way we turn something into an option is we use this takes value true. It is now an option. It has, and what has made it an option is the short and long and a takes value. Not to get confusing, but positional values also have takes value true. It's just behind the scenes. You could add it here. and that'll still work, but I usually don't just to keep it less confusing. What makes a, a positional argument, a positional argument is that it takes a value and has an index and does not have a long or a short. What makes a flag a flag is that it does not have an index. It does not take a value, but it does have a long or a short. And then finally, what makes an option an option is that it has a long or a short it has no index and it does take a value. That's the short and the sweet of what makes these three different types of arguments, the types as they are. So now that we have something defined of, uh, we have a help, a short and a long, and it takes value true, let's add a little bit of parsing code to it as well, or a little bit of uh, using code. Let's do the same thing if let OV for option value. Let's build this real quick. Notice now we have three lines, flags or three sections, flags, options, and args. In a later video, we're going to speak about some special settings where we can actually combine flags and options because some people prefer to have those all as one since they sort of look similar. The options function exactly like flags. If we omit the short, it'll still be aligned with all of the other longs and the help text will still wrap as we need it to and still supports all of the other, uh, you know, 
the new line characters and things. Notice here, our value is opt1, and that is our, that's the name that we gave this argument. In the next video, we're gonna speak about some of the um, advanced option settings, such as changing the name of uh, this value right here. But first I wanted to get this out of the way and how we actually use it. So, all right, now we can do things like we could say A1 for our arg1. Actually, no, let's not do it first because I don't want you thinking that it has to be first. So let's do dash lowercase f, capital F, dash dash option, val1, A1, and see how that parses out. So we have arg1 was used. It was used one time with a value of A1. Flag 1 was used. Flag 2 was used. Flag 2 was used one time. We have option 1 was used with a value of val1. We can do FFF. We can do A1 here. Flag 2 is used three times. Now, this is a somewhat interesting portion. Like I said, we can su we support using the equal sign as well. We can also do a lowercase O and val. We can also do, so do a single character with an equals. And it's all going to come out the same. What would happen if we tried to combine the FFF with O and Val? Same exact thing. What happens here is clap parses all of these as flags. It gets to the O, determines that it's not a flag, that it's actually an option, and then looks for the next value, and that it's Val1. Now this is something I actually haven't tried before, but it should still work. Let's see how this breaks out. There we go. It still parsed it as O equals uh, val. So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend putting something like this in your help documentation. Uh, that might be a little confusing to users, um, but you know, who knows, maybe it wouldn't be. That's absolutely up for you to decide. Let's do uh, dash O with no val. And let's see what happens. There we go, we get an error and it says the argument option, it requires a value, but no value was supplied. And then look here, this is one of the context sensitive usage statements. Arg1 was used up here, we have A1. We have a dash F. Now it didn't count how many times dash F was used, um, but still it knows that we tried to use it. We have our flag, which was used right there under the lowercase f. And then we have option val1. Just to show you uh, that this could have changed, if we do something, uh, let's just remove the r flag. Notice that's no longer in our usage string. To correct this, we just add a val. And everything works now. So that's, uh, that's the easy case for options. Now, what about multiples? Multiples with options is somewhat of a complex, um, complex scenario. Uh, we're gonna dedicate a whole video to that. So coming up in a video or two, we're gonna speak a little bit more about it. But just for the basics, I'm gonna show you that it is possible. Now, because this is such a crazy um, subject, and the reason it's crazy is because do we mean the option itself can appear multiple times, as in dash O value, dash O value, dash O value? Or do we mean that the option can only appear once, but have multiple values, as in dash O value one, value two, value three? Or do we mean both, as in it can appear multiple times and have multiple values, as in dash O value one, value two, value three, dash O value four, value five, value six. Most of that is spelled out right here in the help text. And you see it goes over a good number of examples for what we mean and how to use that and how to use it. Oh. 
So let's go back down here. Did we set it? We set multiple to true with our option. Let's run the help text first. All right. All right, so since we set multiple to true, we have dash o val, dash o val. By default, if you put no other information other than multiple true on an option, it will let you do both, as in multiple occurrences and multiple values. Let's change our parsing code, or not our parsing code, but our, I keep calling it parsing code for some reason. Let's change this to uh, multiple uses. So remember values of option one. And here we're just gonna loop through all the different values. So by default, let me differentiate this a little bit. You'll see value one, value two. We could have also put this like this, value one, value two. We could even separate them a little bit more. Value one, two, three. Uh, so by default, it means it can be used multiple times or have multiple values. So it's sort of ambiguous we can add options to that to sort of ratchet that down and tell clap exactly what we mean. This also happens to mean if we were to do something like uh, dash F O val one, val two, val three, and then a one. Remember a one, we wanted to be stored in arg one, but let's see what happens here. It says option one was used with a value of a one. This is because we haven't told clap how many values to expect. So it's going to continue parsing until it reaches its limit. It doesn't know that a one should be going to arg one. This is something to note when you're designing your documentation. What we can do to fix that is put that before, before our option, or we could do something like tell clap exactly how many, how many values to expect out of option. Another thing to note is if we do something like O equals val1, val2, val3. Now, in a recent version of CLAP, we've recently made this change. So we've run this right now as is. Notice we have a single value of val1, 2, and 3. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to use what's called a delimiter and change that to three separate values for option. But just so that you know, some uh, command line applications support that, support using commas and other, other types of things for multiple values. Some of them don't want to make that multiple values, they only want it one. So by default, with no other things set in option other than multiple true, you, it's not gonna use this, any sort of delimiter. And that's a recent change in CLAP, so I wanted to make it pretty apparent here. All right, so that's pretty much it for options. If we go back in here and take a look at what we've got. Oh, the one last thing before we go, options, unlike flags, can be required. Notice here, our usage string has changed you now have to use option and it can be used multiple times. If we run that without it, it'll say, hey, you forgot to use option. You should have used it. We can silence that. By doing something like that. Uh, something to know, remember we put um, multiple true um, and it was parsing A1. 
what happens if we do this? This will actually do arg1. So once clap reaches, even the multiple true, it reaches another flag or option or something along those lines, and it knows to start parsing other flag or other arguments again. It doesn't by default just go back to option one because that's what it was, it was expecting. Now, if we do a three or val two, it's going to say it wasn't expecting it, even though this accepts multiple ones. That's because if you get too far down this usage chain, um, that could be a very, very confusing thing to try and troubleshoot. So uh, that's why it won't continue parsing as options once it reaches a another hyphen. So that's pretty much it. You can make it uh, multiples. Uh, one more error I'm going to show you is FF. Remember, this is not multiple, or same thing as doing this. It's going to tell us that our flag was used more than once, but it can't be used multiple times. And our usage string says, we know you tried to use it once. Go ahead and use that again. But then you also need to use this, because this is a required argument. So that's pretty much it for options. I know we went a slightly over time on this video. Uh, I apologize for that. But tune in next time, and we're going to talk about some of the advanced things we can set when it comes to options and setting some of those overrides for the names and things like that. Anyways, thanks again.